This is Junk Dump, and today it's all about lower control arm restorations. I'm going to be working on a GMA body lower control arm, and that's for Chevelles, Cutlass, Skylarks, and Tempests. And this is a pretty typical result you'll see from using 415 and similar products. It doesn't take too long for the product to start to chip and crack, and then the rust begins. I can see that it looks like the product was applied properly. I definitely can see proper prep work was completed before they used the coating. I see this quite a bit in cars that are daily driven um, where those products were used. And the cracking and peeling does definitely lead to um, excessive rusting. I don't recommend using those products, um, especially if you're looking for long term results. So I'm going to try to cover a few techniques on how to take this lower control arm that's in poor shape and return it to a restored state. If you don't have a press and you're looking to remove those bushings, there are other ways to do it using vices or like in this way, a C-clamp. You don't want to damage the control arm, so it's important that you get a deep socket that only contacts the bushing lug. And sometimes it's easier to remove the inner metal sleeve before you remove the rubber itself. Now it's time to move on and use a socket to press out the rubber. And look at those reflexes, what a catch. The elongated bushing can be a little tricky, but we still start by pressing out that inner metal sleeve. Removing the end of the bushing can be helpful. If you don't have a clamp, you can also use a drill to remove the bushing. I recommend using one of your older used drill bits as this can damage it a bit. Now that you've removed all the rubber, the outer sleeves typically come out fairly easy. It depends how much rust and corrosion you have around them. Sometimes I can get them out without damaging them at all, but in, in this case they're just too rusted into place. And not to mention there's that 415 media on the outside of it too. So it took a little bit of convincing to get them out.
Now, if you do have a press, pressing out the bushings and bearings is, is fairly easy, as I'll demonstrate here. Now I'm going to prep the lower control arm by using blasting media. I like to use uh, fine blend. And I'm going to remove all the rust, all the paint, all the coating, so that we can start fresh. I'm using cold slide media, and like I said before, I'm using a fine blend. With the prep work completed, I painted that with a semi-gloss black. Once the paint dries to the touch, I put it in an oven and I bake it on. Next, I prep that paint, I scuff it up a bit, and then I add another coating that's a durable, chip-resistant kind of coating. Now I'll demonstrate one technique for installing the bushings without using a press. I use spacers at the end and that's going to support those tangs at the end so that you don't crush them. The elongated bushing is a bit more tricky than the round bushing. You notice the rubber extends further and you can't quite get a round socket on that. So what I tend to use is a punch and do it just and I punch it in just a bit at a time.
you don't have a press, this is one way that you can install that lower ball joint. Here's what it looks like with all the pieces pressed into place. And for the last step, I clean off those bushings, I prep them, and then I paint them with that coating. And this is the finished result. As you can see, there's a dramatic difference between what it looked like before and now. Luckily, the metal was in good shape. It was just rusted. If this is going on a car that's not a high-end restoration and you're going to be driving it, what I typically do is put a coating of Cosmoline on it. Once again, I'm Junk Dump and this was the restoration of a lower control arm for a GMA body. The Chevelle's Cutlass, Skylark, and Tempest. Thank you for watching and don't be afraid to leave me some comments.